Alright, so today I want to take some time and talk a little bit about JMS um, and show you guys how I like to make it for my garden. Um, just kind of some of the steps and ingredients that I use um, as taught by um, Jadon um, after I kind of learned it in one of the classes and, and reading his book. Um, if you haven't picked up the book, I would highly, highly recommend um, getting this. Um, it's pretty eye-opening um, to you. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be culturing um, microbes in an anaerobic solution um, using um, Jadam's version of IMO, which is leaf mold. So basically I collected um, some basically some stuff from underneath the tree that just has a bunch of mycelium and microbes all over it. And this is what we're gonna be using as our starting material for uh, for our JMS or Jadam microbial solution. Um, so we have a bucket of water, um, which is basically, you know, if you think about it, there's nothing in it. So by adding some food and some minerals and some leaf mold into it, the, the microbes that are on the leaf mold will basically populate this whole area, turning this into a, um, into a concentrated um, solution that we can apply to our plants. Um, now, once this is done, we wouldn't want to apply this directly um, straight unless it's an area that's completely bare um, because there's so many microbes in it that you would, you could burn your roots um, and it could heat up the soil a little too much. So once this is done, we'll be diluting this um, one to 10. Um, so there's about four gallons in this. So this will make me about 40 gallons of um, a pliable solution that I could apply on my plants. Um, this will also be used um, on a weekly basis to kind of help continuously grow the microbes as the area that I'm growing in at the moment um, is fairly new soil or soil that's just been turned into dirt at this point. There's really no life into it. So um, as I kind of continue to work it, um, we're growing the microbial population. So yeah, let's get to it. I'll show you guys what we're going to be using. So first we have a gallon of water or a bucket of water, about four gallons of water. I like to do this because when I transport, it makes it easier. So it's not flopping off the sides and stuff like that. So it just makes it a little bit easier for me. We have what I think is probably the most important ingredient is, um, you know, your starting material, your leaf mold. Um, and then we have potatoes. Um, so potatoes can be used. You can also use other grains. Um, in the book, they teach using rice as well. Um, the simplest way to go about it is potatoes. Um, any kind of potatoes that you have um, will work. Um, and you would wanna cook them down a little bit um, to make them soft. So I throw these into the microwave um, for about five minutes or so. You can boil them as well. To me, um, it's easier just to pop them in the microwave if you have one available. And what that'll do is just kind of make them soft so you can mush them up in the water because we're basically going to be releasing these potatoes into the water um, with our leaf mold. Um, in addition to that, we have some rocks um, that we're going to be using. Um, these are going to be going inside of our mesh bag. Um, I use a paint strainer bag. You can get these at like Home Depot or Lowe's, any hardware store for a couple of bucks. Um, so it's pretty affordable. Um, and basically you drop your rocks in and this is gonna keep it down um, to keep this bag submerged into the water. Um, additionally to that, we have seawater. Um, so I live next to an ocean, close to an ocean that I have that ex at resource accessible to me. So if you have that accessible to you, I would highly recommend to pick this up. Um, just take a bucket down there, fill it up, fill up what you need and bring it home. And you'll be using this one to 30. I know a lot of people ask, um, isn't the salt going to affect the soil? If you think about it, I mean, this is so doubt. We're, we're putting in 500 milliliters, right? So about this much, about this much seawater into four gallons of water, and then that's gonna be diluted into 40 gallons of water. So we really have 500 milliliters that's gonna be diluted into 40 gallons of water, which isn't very much, but there's 83, um, minerals that we can actually pull from this, uh, from the seawater, um, that can help feed the plants. So instead of buying, you know, other uh, minerals um, that you're going to go to the store and get, I mean, just go pick up some seawater if you have it accessible to you. Um, if you don't have it accessible, you can also use a product like C90. 
um, which is uh, basically just it's sea salt, um, agricultural sea salt. Um, I, I wouldn't use um, table salt. Um, some of them have like anti-caking agents and things like that. So if you are gonna use some kind of um, other sea salt, just look up the ingredients and make sure that it's just pure sea salt um, before you use it. So let's go ahead and uh, get to it and start, show you guys how we're gonna make this. So you put the rocks in, drop it into the bag, or I'm sorry, into the bucket. Take your potatoes, add your potatoes in, all right? Once you have the potatoes in the bag, you can grab your leaf mold, just grab a handful. I mean, there's no such thing as too much, I guess. So just grab some, put it inside of the bag, and this is kind of what you're gonna be sitting with. Once you have this, you're gonna be massaging these potatoes to release the starch into the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it in the water. And release the potatoes. And just massage them. Because what you're wanting to do is you want to release the potatoes into the water so that way the microbes have somewhere to kind of go and eat. So that's gonna be your feeding, your feeding material for the microbes. So once you're done with this, you can tie this off with a stick, tie the bag on a stick, put a, a bag over the top and let it sit. Um, this is anaerobic, so you don't necessarily need um, air to get into this. I don't have a stick or a plastic bag as um, accessible to me at the moment. What I do have though is essentially the lid from the bucket. So I typically, what I do is, I'll just drop this over the edge, and then put the lid on top, just to kind of secure and keep it from falling out, okay? So what's gonna happen next is, this will sit here for anywhere from 24 to 48 hours, um, sometimes a little bit longer, depending on how cold it is out. Um, but the idea is that this is gonna begin to foam and you're gonna end up seeing these circular rings that are start forming, which is all the microbes populating in here. And eventually, it might take a couple of tries for you to get this right, but eventually, um, you wanna, eventually if you leave it too long, it's just gonna collapse. And at that point, it wouldn't be as effective to use as a microbial solution, it would be used more as a fertilizer. But if you're gonna use it as a uh, microbial solution, you wanna try to catch it at its peak um, ripeness, which is basically where the foam is at its biggest. Um, you might even see a ring that breaks over the edge. Um, and during in colder climates, you might not get any bubbles really at all. So it's just kind of keeping an eye on it to see when you start seeing these, these, these rings break <clears throat> along the edges. Once you have, once it reaches that peakness, it'll stay there for roughly about 12 hours. Um, and at that point, that's basically your window of time to use it. So try to time it when, you, when you're gonna use it. I'm gonna be using this in about two days. I've done this a couple of times and I know in my um, temperature that I have it in this room, which is in the low 70s, I need to run this for about 48 hours <clears throat> to have this ready to go. So I'll be using this in about two days. Um, so this, once this is done, like I said, we're gonna dilute this one to 10. So this bucket will go into 40 gallons of water um, and I will be applying this on my crops. Now, one of the best times to use this is prior to planting to help the microbes basically go deep into the soil to help with the root structure, as well as prior to fruiting. So prior to fruiting for trees and things like that would be a perfect time to use this um, to soak your plants and things like that as you're going through these transitions to kind of help give them that boost of the microbes and the nutrients that are in the soil to kind of help move them around. Um, so yeah, so that's really about it. This is how I make my solution. That's kind of how I use it. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please reach out and I will try to answer them the best that I can. Um, I will be doing some updates and show you guys what this looks like um, over the course of the next couple of days. So you guys can kind of see what the foam looks like and see the shift of how the solution changes. All right, after 24 hours, let's see together what it looks like. All right, there we 
go. A lot of activity. Just gonna let this bone keep growing the next day. Normal let this go a little longer, but we're gonna use this um, today just since we already need it. Alright, number diluting this one to ten. So for this bucket, about four gallons. We obviously like this too. 